Are you ready to experience Monster Jam? Welcome to the massive Mercedes-Benz Superdome, New Orleans, Louisiana. One of the buildings that has hosted several Super Bowls and for decades has included one of the biggest Monster Jam events every single year. And this year is no exception. A capacity crowd on hand to see an incredible lineup of racing superstars, a combination of some of the newest faces in the game, and of course, the superstars who are at the top of the Monster Jam food chain. It's a great racing battle about to unfold, and it's coming up next. We go. Who has got what it takes to get a little bit more in the semifinal round? Will it be Gunslinger and Scott Hartsock? Remember, even though it's closed, the gap is closed. This has been the fastest truck all night long, pretty much. Jimmy Creighton and Bounty Hunter. The winner of this race goes to the UTI Championship. Now that was horsepower coming off the line there, bad boy. <laughs> even to the turn. A little bit of a bobble for Hartsock, and you can't make a mistake against Creighton. Oh, and Creighton's making a big mistake he on the outside too wide, of the yeah. track. Uh, he's going to make up for it right here, though. Bounty Hunter gets it done. Hartsock knew he had to be perfect and gave it everything he had and overdid it in the final turn. And look at the numbers again. A 21 with a 32. Impressive. Bounty Hunter and Jimmy Creighton will now advance into the UTI championship race. Well, look who his opponent's going to be. It's going to be one of these two. Gravedigger will renew the greatest rivalry in motorsports, Team Gravedigger versus Team Max D. It's Carl Van Horn and Tom Mintz ready to go wheel to wheel, and the winner draws Bounty Hunter in the championship round. Look at how Mintz is lined up in that left lane he is. That's not, he is not racing this left lane all night long. So Carl Van Horn, he had lane choice, and he purposely put Mentz over there. Mentz was lined way up to the one side. Grave Diggers got the lead as they come down the straightaway for home, but it is tight. Mentz is trying to close. Watch the finish line. Grave Digger holds up oh Max D. My. By about the length of one wheel, the victory will go to Team Grave Digger, and your championship will be another World Finals Championship rematch between Team Grave Digger and Team Bounty Hunter. And that's Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam Racing at its best. And look at the numbers there from CBH at 21-35, a very fast time. Bounty Hunter versus Gravedigger. Yes, these teams have met in the ultimate race at the Monster Jam World Finals Championship oh, yeah. round in Las Vegas. Well, here is Dennis Anderson's teammate, Carl Van Horn, trying to keep the Digger dominance alive. But all night long, Bounty Hunter has been at least just a little bit faster than the competition. Does Creighton have one more bad run in him? We're gonna find out here, because it's gotta be bad fast against Gravedigger. And Digger's in trouble. That's what lane choice will do for you, my friends. Creighton has been bad fast all night. We talk about it all year long. Lane choice, lane choice, lane choice. Carl Van Horn is not running that lane. Jimmy Creighton is running it all night. Bounty Hunter wins the racing championship in New Orleans. Jimmy Creighton with another victory. Mark, he talked earlier about this being a critical momentum builder for him on that route to the Monster Jam World Finals. But you can't get much more momentum out of New Orleans than that. Now, what a big track this is, and, it, and it's very similar in the quality of dirt that is at the World Finals in Las Vegas. And we got a little celebration going on here for winning racing from Jimmy Creed. Celebratory freestyle from Jim Creighton and the Bounty Hunter. And our colleague Larry Jewett is caught up with Jimmy Creighton. Congratulations, Jim. Good to have you back. It's so good to get to be back here in New Orleans, get this television win. Uh, you know, New Orleans has been really good to us. Uh, it's been four years since we've been here. We had a good time down here four years ago. Decided to bring my wife back. So good to have her back on the team. Uh, we're having a Cinderella year so far. It's been awesome. Man, we love you guys. We've got, we got so much support here, so much support in Las Vegas. If you guys can come out to Las Vegas, I'm, 
I'm sure going to give it everything I got as an independent. I'm going to, I'll risk this truck to win those trophies and to, and to make you guys happy, I promise. Boy, these folks in New Orleans know how to party. And every winter they love to party with Monster Jam in the house. Capacity crowd on hand at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Starting us off in freestyle, Dawn Crete and Scarlet Bandit. Well, here we go. She talked about being in some arena events and now getting back on a big floor. The floors don't come much bigger than this one, Mark Schrader. The Superdome, square footage-wise, is one of the biggest floors that this sport ever comes to. And really, it allows for laying out freestyle obstacles where you can get a good run out. Oh, and, and like that right there, you know, Dawn here, first one, draws number one to come out and freestyle, getting nice air, and she's gonna raise the bar. You know, I've known Dawn a long time. I was actually at the very first show that she drove at, and watching her progress the, over the years has just been phenomenal. Some of the great highlights, whether it be from Advanced Auto Parts World Finals, um, Houston, Texas, I mean, she knows how to drive this truck. Two extreme racing out of Tonganoxie, Kansas fields, the Bounty Hunter and the Scarlet Bandit. And of course, that's something that Dawn has the benefit of, the best in the business when it comes to equipment and raw power. Now, one of the things, Mark, she's got fresh obstacles. That's one of the things a lot of people say, oh, it's a disadvantage to come out early because, uh, no. you know, the scoring may not, the judges may be a little more reserved. Well, the good side, though, again, is she gets fresh obstacles. Later on, the Max D's, the Grave Diggers, are going to be searching for stuff to hit. Well, they sure are. And, and, and there's a certain amount of truth to everything that you said there. It's a little bit more difficult. The judges are more reserved. You know, they, they want to see all the trucks run before they give out good scores. But, you know, I know people have been first or second truck out. We got a score of 28, 29, and held that through an entire show. So, remember that fellow named Cam McQueen a couple of years ago at the uh -huh. World Finals who came out first and set yes, the seat all night. So, there you go. We're in bonus time with Scarlet Bandit and Don Creighton keeping the momentum up, keeping the flow up. He's not had any real wow moments yet. And of course, everybody looking for that. That will help your scores from the three judge panel that does regulation. Of course, she's already got her scores in from those three. Now it's the bonus judge who can add up to five points to her score, depending on what she does in this 30 seconds. Always love listening to the power yeah, of that engine. I was just going to say yeah. that. I was just being silent there, if you can believe that, for a moment. And listening to the, the zoomy exhaust on that unique horsepowered mode. So that'll wrap it up for Dawn Creighton. She gets it started in Scarlet Bandit. And it's a score of 19. So the leader in New Orleans early on is Dawn Creighton and the Scarlet Bandit. Here's a guy who we would expect to take a run at it. Morgan Kane, an Iron Man who's thrilled about the way his team is doing this year. When you go to a, an encyclopedia or you look, at the, you look at the term rising star, Morgan's picture. Is that his picture? Year. I mean, this youngster still in his early 20s, former college soccer player. But man, is he taken to being a Monster Jam superstar driver? Of course, got into it because he's been best friends forever with the Andersons, Ryan and Adam. But now he's kind of rolling on his own with the Iron Man team. Well, he's making a name for himself, and, uh, you know, he's, a, he's got a bright future ahead of him. First crossbow we've seen of that magnitude. That it is. Yeah, he mentioned Christian earlier, and, and you know, talk about the up-and-coming drivers. You keep your eye on we that. We have a lot of up-and-coming technicians in the uh -huh. cans. He's well-spoken. He understands technically. He's had the proper training, and that's what we talk about our great sponsor, UTI. UTI. So I, you know, the Universal Technical Institute is where we're training a lot of our there technicians we go. because that's what it takes to work on one of these trucks now. You can't just oh, walk yeah. out there with a wrench and be a good old boy. Absolutely, you are 100% correct about that, my friend. Under 30 seconds, that clock countdown is regulation time. If Morgan Kane can fill it, he'll head into bonus. And it looks like he's also going to be headed to the hot seat if he keeps the clock going. This has been an impressive run from Iron Man. The move to move, combos and, and cross threads, those are the things that impress the judges. And some big airs yeah. mixed in between. And that's what impresses the fans. You bet. We will go to bonus time with Morgan Kane and Team Iron Man. Now that's something to show the bonus judge. Again, remember the bonus judge totally separate. He's just gone on the clock, so to speak, and Morgan gave him a big leap right off the bat. 
can give about two or three more wow factors like that, and I think we've got ourselves a brand new leader. Iron Man, one of the most popular pieces in terms of appearance, and you can see it performs as well. Now, what do the judges think? Yep, we got ourselves a new leader. 21 is his score. Look at that. He's got a Traxxas he's going to give to one of the fans there. Hey, I'm over here, Morgan. I want to take one of these days, One of these days, you know what? I'm going to give this mic to you. I'm going to let you double mic it because you, you'd like that anyway. I need to be a fan and get myself one of those. Nice start. Comes roaring out. He's got to beat a 21 to get the lead. Iron Man is on top here in New Orleans. Nice momentum and flow to start, man. This is this is what you call attacking the course rather than just kind of getting out there and rolling. He's another one, Scott. I just love listening to the music that that big motor of his makes. You know, there's a couple of guys here this weekend that have been known in the industry to have big motors. Uh, Hartsock is one of them. Creighton is another one. It's great to listen to that music. Now, I, I, I must say, I must follow up on what you said. Not, not correct me, I'm just an addendum. You're talking, you're about, big, you're talking about big too. motors uh -huh. amongst the world of big motors. Everybody's got a big motor. Yeah, but they're talking about big motors. Yeah. <laughs> Hard sock doing a nice job. Good hang time on that leap. Yeah, great hang time. Bad place to land. Really sent him for a, a crazy little loop there, but he gathered it back up. He's doing good. And he's still on the clock inside of 30 seconds left in regulation time. As we know, in today's world, with the competition at this level, you've got to get some bonus points to have a chance to win. I like his momentum. Scott Hartsock will take it down into the final eight seconds of regulation time, and then Gunslinger will head for bonus time. Now, this is important here. Last move he made for the regulation judges didn't have a whole lot to it. He gave him a little more to see, but now he's in bonus time and looking for something different to impress a completely different judge. And that's where you got to look at it. Well, you do. Well, it's two different competitions, really. That's the way I look at it. You got your 90 seconds of one competition, then you come back out in your mind and do another 30 second performance. Yeah, because honestly, you need to rank highly among those first three judges. Against both. But often, it's whoever gets the most bonus points in the close competition. Absolutely. Wins. You're right. Hartsock, again, the flow good. Not sure the wow moment everybody wants is there, but he certainly has given it a whale of a run here, and I love the energy of his freestyle today. Look at that. Yeah, that was awesome. Unfortunately, uh, that was at the end of his Not time. Not sure that counted. Yeah, the boards were red. That's when you know when you see the ribbon boards oh, red. Look at these. All look at this these I know is not counting. Some of his best moves are coming after all the scores are in. Timing is everything. He's got the lead. It's a 22 for Scott Hartsock and Gunslinger. There is a new leader, and you can see he is in the hot seat and saluting the fans as they salute him right back. Well, Gunslinger's your leader, and now Zombie Nation. Nice start, Sean Duhon and Zombie. Again, this truck was created thanks to fans going to MonsterJam.com, letting the, the folks at Monster Jam know what the next cool new design style of truck they wanted to see far and away. I mean, this wasn't even close. Zombie was the one the fans picked. The truck was then created, and Sean Duhon has turned out to be the perfect driver to put in the truck. I mean, he's, he's a veteran, but he's still young, and he loves the role. And now here in New Orleans, his family's been walking around the stands all dressed up in their zombie gear. It's zombie nation around here. That was a nice move right there, Scott. You know, I've got to make a comment about this whole body and the amount of work that went into building this body. I'm not even going to throw it, it even indicate that I know how much it costs to build it, but by looking at it and you're looking at how Sean Duhon takes care of that body and all the detail, whether it be the rags coming off it, the, the, the moldy skin or whatever it is, even the tires look different than a normal Monster Jam monster truck. Are you saying it's scarier than the average Monster Jam truck? It's kind of gross, actually. <laughs> Fans love it. You got to saw it at the party in the pits today. The line went on forever to get up close to Zombie to get a picture with Sean in the truck. And now Sean's about to fill right regulation time so Gunslinger may be getting a run for his money as the leader because Magnaflow bonus time is about to be invaded by the Zombie Nation. Oh nice there. Really nice. I love the oh, timing. Oh no I talked about it. he's taking care of it. 
The thing about it, though, and he may get enough regulation points, he made that huge leap right as the clock went from regulation to bonus. Is going to the hot seat, but not to supplant Scott Arnsock. They'll share it. A tie for the lead. Zombie and Gunslinger, each with scores of 22. That is now the score to beat. There are a whole bunch of heavy hitters to come, and one of them is Rod Schmidt, the former Team Grave Digger driver, now behind the wheel of Monster Mutt Rottweiler. He's fired up to be here. Well, here's your chance right here. 22 is the score to beat. Gunslinger and Zombie have both put that number on the board. Should they stay on top, Mark? Yes, there is a fifth judge whose scores we never look at unless there's a tie for the win. Oh, hey, look what we brought. Oh, nice. Very nice. <laughs> he scaled it. He didn't even touch the motorhome. No, not a bit. Just clipped the rooftop AC unit. Brought Look that out during the guy. break, yeah. He got some great momentum here. Uh oh, hang on. Stand with it. Nice save. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Tap I it again. Tap I it. Spoke too soon. Well, I said he had some speed going on there, and there it was. Well, he pulled it the first time, but you see that sometimes just because you save it the first time, he's got to keep it on all four wheels. And he was still recovering and over she went again. Weiler, but the fans were digging it, making some noise. It's a 15 for the Monster Mutt Rottweiler and Rod Schmidt. Here we go. The only driver who has the opportunity to double down. Double down meaning, of course, that you win racing and freestyle in the same facility on the same night. Jimmy Creighton and Bounty Hunter earlier. Oh, yeah, hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I hope they give that to us in the replay. I want to see that on board. <laughs> Nonetheless, the only guy who can win the double down is our racing champion here in New Orleans, Bounty Hunter and Jimmy Creighton. And what a start. Arguably one of the best technical freestylers. You know, there's some guys who can just go out and find a way to get it, almost an immediate wow factor. Creighton analyzes what it takes to impress fans and judges. And he'll give it all to you. From combinations of power wheelies and slap wheelies to knowing when to hit the big air to the cross threads and trying unique moves that others haven't. And that's why Jimmy is a successful freestyler and a former world freestyle champion. That's correct. Again, I like his moment up here. Momentum. You know, I, the wow factor, I want to see more. And I know he's got it in him. And, I, you know, maybe it's just one of those deals that he, he's thinking he's going to save it until the very end, which we've seen him do and win many events with that. So. You know, you've got to be around at the end, as we've seen. And he well, is now down under 20 seconds to go in regulation. So if he's got a couple of aces up his sleeve, I think he's going to pull them out here soon. Absolutely. You know, and it seems like this track is, uh, we've noticed here. Oh, there you go. There we go. That's well done. More of a length jump there than yep. a height jump. We've seen this track. I didn't expect it to be such a truck-eating track. So, you know, it's uh, he's smart about that being calculated. And, you know, he wants to make it for his entire two-minute performance. Going into bonus time is Jimmy Creighton and the Bounty Hunter Ford Expedition. Nice cross-thread move there. Get a chance to get up to five more points from a separate judge who is only scoring what he does now. Uh, is something wrong, Mark? That's not like him. Yeah, stopped. he's broke. Left rear is broke. He felt it. I did not see it, but if you look, the left rear wheel is wobbling around. I got to say, it's probably a knuckle or a spindle. It's about ready to come undone there. And it will be as the clock fills because he has now filled the bonus time. So all the scores are going in. There's nothing more he can add. All right, you're on board with the 10-time, the only 10-time Monster Jam World Champion, Tom Metz and Max D. Oh, yeah. That'll start the clock. Score to beat to 25. Bounty Hunter's your leader. If the Bounty Hunter wins it, he'll get the double down. Ooh. That's something you don't see very often from the king, Max D. Uh, you know, he had to back up a little now, bit, but it's not going to matter. You know, we're still, still seeing sparks, Mark, but those are planned. He, he's got some some. Well, he's got some pyro, yeah. some fireworks in this cool new body. You see it the way it comes out of the side of the face. It freaks me out every time I see it because I think, ah, he's got brakes going bad. He's got rotors going bad. Oh, no, it's just Tom's pyro. So Tom needs to put up a big number because he knows a fellow named CBH. Oh, oh! Has wanted, to get some, goodness. wanted to get a piece of this action, but that was crazy. Really, that, Mets? That was just crazy. <laughs> Wow. Max D hanging oh, it out. Seriously, Mets? What does this guy not do? Uh, and, it it, it, it and, blows and, my mind. And yes, he is serious. 
<laughs> you haven't spent much time with him outside of this Monster Jam truck, then there's nothing serious about Tom Men until he gets that helmet on. Unbelievable. 15 the move. seconds now, flatten it down. He'll go into Magna Flow bonus time. Yeah, hang time. And it'll be bonus time. This is four. This. Let's watch this. Let's watch. Oh, yeah. That's how you end regulation and start bonus. He is just burning this house up. And uh, with all due respect to Jimmy Creighton, the double down is not going to be won tonight because this is going to take the lead. How do you stuff? You, you start out with a, a $250,000 truck. You, you turn it into a, a, a pile of junk and then and land it. And he blows up his tranny. We'll be shocked if the judges don't put up a bigger number. And they do. 30. Oh, oh my. Into the lead is Max D. And that guarantees that Carl Van Horn has to get in to bonus time. build another truck and now we are going to watch Gravedigger go after Max D. How many times have we seen it before? Max D's got a 30. That's the score to beat. But CBH, if he's on his game and the truck will hold up, is capable of putting that number up. Let's watch and listen to Gravedigger and what Mark likes to call music to his ears. Oh my! Oh. He landed on Max D. Are you kidding me? And he's still going. That's what, that's the you kidding me you part know, from, of it. From this angle here, we did not see that coming. Oh my goodness. Do you think Carl saw it? Look at that air. Wow, wow. What a one-on-one -on -one comparison the fans and the judges are getting. Tom Metz burns it down, and Carl Van Horn is matching it air for air, move for move. And with that landing on top of Max D, maybe topped it. Literally. Get it. Literally, I, literally yeah, yeah I, I get it. I'm sorry, buddy, here. I'm just speechless, if you can wrap your head around that. This is an oh incredible, my. incredible performance. This, this is just big. He's still it's got 25 big. seconds in regulation. It looks like we've been here for five minutes. Mark, start wow. to finish. If he fills wow. the clock, this is one of the best freestyles we've had the pleasure of seeing all year. He, Carl Van Horn, is burning this place down. He is tearing it up like I've never seen before. In the Magna Flow bonus time for Grave Digger. Boy, he isn't just a kid. His crew has got this truck working just brilliant. Good on them. See what his regulation scores are. He may tie Mentz in regulation because if I'm a judge and I gave Mentz a nine in regulation, I think I might give Van Horn a ten here. That was spectacular. Look at this. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, the cost and assault of that kind of air is just uncanny. Yeah, he's going for nothing but big. Wow. <laughs> Get ready for a 68,000 person standing ovation. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, why not? <laughs> He's done everything else he could do. Why not? Oh. Oh, my goodness. This now, is unbelievable. This, and the rest of this is for the fans. All the scores are in. The question is, are they enough to beat Mensa's total of 30? Gravedigger has absolutely slayed the house here in New Orleans. Oh, why don't, let's just end it this way. End over barrel roll. <laughs> We're good. I don't know when they start doing freestyle of the year balloting. I want that one nominated. <laughs> Man, I can't say enough for these fans here in New Orleans. You guys push it to drive just as hard as we can and get every bit we can get out of that truck. You've been behind us for 31 years. I've been saying it all year long, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys buying our hats and our T-shirts. We love each and every one of you for it. We will drive that thing into the ground every time for you guys. We love you. You got to remember, Max D put up a 30 mark. That means there wasn't much room to top him. No, sure wasn't. But he did. And Grave Digger absolutely has to turn in a performance like that. 
the top max D. Congratulations to Team Gravedigger on one of the freestyles of the year. For Mark Schrader, I'm Scott Douglas. We'll see you next time with more spectacular action right here on Monster Jam.